It's been a little while since we've done a cup of tea, but I'll tell you what's not been a little while since there was our latest twist in the Maxi Gomez saga. And Gonzo, literally like 28 hours ago, you did a video about him going to Valencia. And since then, it's all gone a bit pear-shaped. Everything's gone crazy. Everyone's everyone's gone crazy. Um, South of Vigo's gone crazy. Valencia's gone crazy. West Ham's gone crazy. Well, it depends who you believe and what you read as to which ones are going crazy. Um I don't know where to start with all this. I'll, I'll give you a quick timeline, then me and Gonzo will go through it all. Uh, yesterday, it was believed uh, that uh, Valencia was pretty much done. It was believed that he was on his way to Valencia, uh, about £16 million, plus um, a player that they believe is worth about £10 million and a loan of another player for two years. So that was the deal that was getting done. The reason Valencia, Celta Vigo are keen to deal with Valencia is they owe 20% of any fee to Maxi Gomez's former club. This way getting a player in exchange, etc., etc. they only have to give 20% of the £16 million instead um, of what West Ham would often. Now, that looked like it was happening. Then suddenly it came out that West Ham United had accepted a bid of just £22.5 million pounds from Marko Inatovic. Seemed a little bit low, seemed a bit quick. The reason is, if you believe the reports, is because West Ham were then going gung-ho on Maxi Gomez. Representatives apparently flew to Vigo this morning uh, to... Try and hijack any deal by offering forty million pounds, boom, on the table um, for Maxi Gomez. Since then, there's been various reports as to which one Maxi Gomez prefers, whether it's Valencia or whether it's West Ham United. One thing that does appear apparent is that uh, Maxi Gomez's representatives p- perhaps prefer the move to London because of the they're going to make a little bit extra cash if their player comes to West Ham United. So they're keen on their player to come to London. But it seems that Maxi Gomez was still quite keen to go to Valencia. The other part of the story is this morning, the two players from Valencia had medicals booked at Celta Vigo, but apparently they've been put on hold. They haven't gone ahead because obviously everything's now gone up, up in there a little bit. Celta Vigo are still playing hardball West Ham United, however, and basically saying if you want him, you're going to have to pay the release clause, you're going to have to buy him out of his contract. Late tonight, an hour ago or so, there's been rumours that Everton, now on Maxi Gomez, there's another club coming in. They're coming in at the last minute, offering £40 million as well. And they are after a striker this summer. So while it seems a bit too probably not true, perhaps they have been waiting on the sidelines, watching, see what the price is, then swoop in. But you would think they would have swooped last night when the Valencia thing was almost pretty much done. And then literally... 15 minutes ago, that's how fresh it is. 15 minutes ago, quarter past eight. Maxi Gomez is still in Uruguay. He's having his holiday. <laughs> he played in Copa America. Uruguay got put out by Peru on penalties. So Maxi Gomez is now uh, enjoying his holiday. So he's actually in Uruguay. So while all this is kicking off in Spain, in Vigo with his representatives, he's actually just enjoying a little holiday. Um, so that is where we're at. Uh, Marco Navich has apparently passed a medical today in London uh, ahead of his move to China, but has not agreed personal terms yet. <whistles> Probably also after a little bit of cash. <laughs> but God, so, <laughs> there we go. From memory, that is the timeline. And what do you make of all this? Well, you've done very well. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you at the same time next week for a cup of tea. No, I, I don't know. What can I say to all that? I, I don't okay, really know okay, what to okay. say. Let me ask you questions. Now, please do, please do. Information. You did a video yesterday, and in your video, you, you to be fair, all window you said, I don't believe Maxi Gomez is a target. Have you changed your opinion on that, going by what's apparently has happened today? And also, who's reporting it, i.e. Sean, an extra Sam employee? Um, not hugely. I, a little bit, I do believe. I, I, I would always concede that there is some interest. But I would imagine how things are run is that they're given a budget. Husalos, Pellegrini are given X amount and they are told what that is. So if, if let's say Sullivan is saying you're getting X amount plus sales, then they're really trying to weigh up. Can we get Fornals? Can we get, which we know they want Fornals, and can we get whatever the two other players we want? I'd imagine there probably was some interest for Maxi Gomez, but at the point where they were asking more than he was worth, really, I think possibly they might have moved on to other targets. I certainly don't think we were all in in the way. And I'm still far from convinced. So my position hasn't changed as much as I'm still not convinced we're going to get him. I've We spoke the other day on a different video, whatever video we did. And I said about looking at things without emotion and uh, just looking at it without being a West Ham fan. And when I do detach myself, I look at all this circus going on. And it does change hourly. 
and nobody seemed to know what's going on and I, I didn't know he was back in uruguay that's funny that was a sort of funny cherry on the cake it's just quite funny if he's on a lilo in a swimming pool pina colada in his hair and bobbing up it, and it, down. Makes sense. it makes sense because uruguay only got knocked out about this time last week in Copa america so he is due his three four weeks holidays now so yeah i be, i just find it really funny particularly if he's out there without a phone signal i, I would I find that quite an amusing um quite an amusing thought and, but anyway with, with all of that i've not changed I've, I've not really changed i'm not sure we are in for him i'm not sure we're getting him um i just find the whole thing totally and utterly ridiculous it is a circus it is unbelievable and i am um, i'm far from excited about it and i think we are almost spending so much time as fans oh wanting maxi gomez or not everybody by the way i did that video and the vast majority of comments were in agreement with me okay so let's say that but i do see a lot of posts and a lot of things where, where people are sort of fawning over maxi gomez really yearning for him with and i don't think he's done anything to deserve that and i just wonder if we're so desperate to have him and pay the money for him have we actually stopped to consider whether he's worth that if we have if we're to believe that we have bid 40 million is he actually worth that i mean i i'm, I'm not so <laughs> I, so that, that, that what my point is i know that's a separate subject but my point is that almost makes me not believe it why would we go from not thinking he was worth it to suddenly thinking oh yeah actually we'll pay more than he's worth to, 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 to defend those that want him, because I am one of them. I don't want the player. I want Pellegrini's number one target, because I do believe he is Pellegrini's number one target. I know you have doubts. I understand that. But I do believe he is Pellegrini's target. So that's why I want him. I, I, I perhaps don't want Maxi Gomez. I want Pellegrini's target, if that makes sense. There's a difference for me. It's not the two things. It's a bit like... I don't know. It's hard to. It's a bit like no, Felipe, I understand. It's a bit like, Felipe, I understand. It's a bit like Felipe Anderson. I didn't really know that much about Felipe Anderson, but I really wanted him because Pellegrini really wanted him. Mm. And it's a bit like um, when Slav and Bullish wanted William Cavallo. I really wanted William Cavallo. Well, I kind of really wanted William Cavallo anyway, but I really wanted him because he's Bullish's number one target. I'm just a big believer that you back your manager to the hilt and you let him live or die by his own sword a little bit. And I always say that if you don't trust your manager to buy your players, there's a problem there. And that is you don't trust your manager because that is part of the manager's job to an extent. Um, I do believe we're all in for Maxi Gomez. I think in January we wanted him, but we all knew what the deal was in January. Arnavich had to leave first. We were not going to have Maxi Gomez and Mark Arnavich. That was The thing was always get rid of Arnavich, Maxi Gomez comes. And that's why when he signed his new deal, that's why Pellegrini had a face like thunder. I think it wasn't just the contract thing. I think it was also because he thought, well, I want that guy now and I can't get him because... He's now here. And I think that's why we've accepted £22.5 million. I think Pellegrini is basically, it's come out that Pellegrini is going to have the final say. I think he's basically said, you know what, get rid of him now, £22.5 million. I think we cooled our interest in Maxi Gomez because I think we hit our ceiling price, £25, £30 In between there, I think that was our last bid. That's all we could afford. That was our kitty in South of Eagles. And now you're all right. So we've gone, right, okay, we can't afford it. Then twenty-two and a half million comes along for Marco Navich. I think that's where Pelagin goes. Right, get rid of him now for twenty-two and a half. Throw that in the kitchen and let's see what we can get. Uh, Maxi Gomez. So I think that's why we've jumped from twenty-seven to forty overnight because we've now got that Marco Navich money to play with. Uh, Maxi Gomez's wages is covered by um, is it, the wages then just transferred over to Maxi Gomez if you like. I think that's how it, it's worked if you like. Uh, it reminds me of. An apprentice we got to work uh, well, I, it's a site i work on but he is he works for a company we work alongside them and when we go to the pub after payday every month he um he goes in hey, i want to be on be on a bit shot you want shots with that and everyone says no 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 mate don't be silly you're only an apprentice you're only on whatever he's on you know 40 pound a day or whatever it might be no no don't be silly you don't buy the drinks ah, no no don't worry i've got the money i've got the money now of course he didn't have the money yesterday he's got the money today he's throwing it all around and thinking oh, he's got a tricky three weeks coming up for the last bit of the month when he's absolutely begging for his payday uh, I, it, it seems like we've had a valuation of him if that's the case, if we're assuming it's right, we've had a valuation of him. That's our valuation. He's worth that much. Suddenly we've got a bit of money and we are like the piss bloke in a pub. You know, um, escorts, but, escorts on me. No, I'm not joking. Um, you know, it's, it's, but, Pellegrini, but Pellegrini doesn't need another three players though, does he? I don't know. I don't know. what You, said, you said three weeks to that guy, but Pe that would be the equivalent of Pellegrini needing getting another three players, but he doesn't. I mean, well, he, he needs another one. He would need, he'd need at least another one. Um, I, I would be again. I'll, I'll say this because I just can't. 
I, 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 maybe I just get bored of it of towing this line of what we need and believe in what we're told we need. I'd be gobsmacked. Let's say Mason Gomez comes in. I'd be gobsmacked if that's our last signing. Yeah, so will I, because yeah, so one, we'll probably need another striker. And two, I think we've got this one out, one in policy after we sort of the striker situation. Whereas if we'll be on these, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see another centre midfielder arrive for roughly the same amount of money. If a surprise bid comes in from Aswaku tomorrow, we'll buy another left back. Um, I do think it'll be one out, one in once the striker scenario is over and done with. I think that's why Pellegrini is willing to chuck the money at it. You know, we've spoke before. I don't think there's such a thing as overpaying for your number one target, the guy that you think fits. Um, it's a bit It's a bit like Iosi Perez, who's just gone to last it for £30 million. Is he a £30 million pound player? No. But if he's exactly what Brendan Rodgers wants, is £30 million too much? I don't think it is. I think you pay what you have to pay to get the perfect fit. And, you know, if, if Perez is £30 million, that almost makes Maxi Gomez look reasonably priced because... Yeah, mate, 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 maybe I, what I would. I mean, there is a mitigating factor in that, though, and we are. It, it dep- as, as I said in my video, you've got to decide. You can't just believe some of it, and then and then you know, and then not believe others or whatever. If you're going to start believing the rumors in the press, then then start believing all of the rumors. So, what the the lineage of the story would suggest that actually didn't want to come, as you suggested, he wanted Champions League football, he wanted to stay in Spain because the language barrier and all the other stuff. If what we have done. Uh, if we are to believe everything, we've got to believe that as well. If what I we've done is, that, yeah, if, if we've gone over there and said, no, 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 honestly, make more money, more money. And he knew that I don't think we've gone and offered more wages than we've gone to offer today. I don't think the wages would have been the problem. I think the, the fee would have been the problem. I think we, we'd freed up a lot of Andy Carroll and, and enough to enough to double whatever he was getting at Valencia. I, so I think what it's done is freed up the, the announcement deal has freed up the transfer fee. So we were already offering him big wages. Now we're just thinking, right, okay, actually we're going big. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the head of his agents. So now, again, the story came out, his agents want he's, You even alluded to it at the start. His agents want him to move. I, I do wonder, you say there's nothing like overpaying for a player. Well, there is. If what happens is you just offer so much, his head gets turned by it. And in a year's time, you're dealing with somebody that's homesick and actually... We we are not in an advantageous position of selling him because number one he's not settled. Number two, everyone was mad for Gokantore, By the way, everyone because we we stalled, we stalled. Everyone said we've got to get Gokantore, we've got to get Gokantore. But if he if it goes to a year's time, then actually Spain will be the only show in town. And what you may well find is someone like sort of ego saying, "Well, we'll take him back, but his um his stock has dropped. We'll give you yeah. twenty million for him." What swings in mind, Wes? What what happens if he comes over here, loves it, and smashes it? Great, great, but it's it's that's great, but it's a hell of a risk factor, though, isn't it? That's the way I, no, I, I know, but we priced it at that risk factor. What we we that risk factor that was already factored in. That that was already the case. Now it's 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 hedged more the other way because we're going to throw another thirteen million at it or whatever. Yeah, I I just don't believe that three men, Pellegrini, who's lost David Sullivan, maybe not so much David Sullivan because he's got <laughs> a poor track record, but I don't believe three men that much experience in football. I've been tracking this guy for so long and they've not unofficially had a word. They've not. And this, his agent, by the way, his agent, I don't know his name. His agent is friends with David Sullivan. Okay. So there's, it's, I'd imagine he's able to just pick up his phone tomorrow and speak to the agent and say, can you speak to Maxi Gomez and find out if he's interested in coming to West Ham United? You know, his, you know his agent is Jonathan Barnett. That's Gareth Bale. That's Gareth Bale's agent. He's quite a famous old agent. He's in, but, do, do you honestly think, I just cannot believe, I just don't believe this for a second, that Pellegrini and Husslos have been chasing this guy, going after this guy so much without finding out if he actually wants to come or not. And I just think for us to do this, there must be something from Maxi Gomez himself that says, I'll come to West Ham. Now, it might be that I would prefer to stay in Spain. However, should the Valencia move not happen or a move to any other Champions League club in Spain not happen, then I'm happy to come to West Ham. This is my preference. There's, there's nothing wrong with being a player's second choice, if you like, I don't think. No, there's not. But if he was on the cusp, if if his preference was to go to Valencia and literally he's got one foot in a door, I know he's in Uruguay, but you know, but um, the, the deal is being done. The other guys from Valencia are at Celta Vigo having their, so for, you imagine for the last three or four days, his agents are saying that the Valencia thing's done. He's probably agreed the fee. Um, possibly, you know, it, it would be a town. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Possibly somebody, one of them was already looking for a house by the, by the lake for him and all the rest of it. If that's the place he wanted to go, 
and actually he already thought he's lying down on his lilo in Uruguay thinking I am 99% a Valencia player now playing Champions League and the rest of it that is a hell of a climb down for him to then for his agents and everybody else and, and Celta Vigo to say whoa hold on no we're scuppering that deal we can all make more money out of this I just wonder if he's there thinking well, hold on I wanted to go to Valencia and the lilo League and the Champions League. Oh, no, 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 no. No, so if you go making more money, we, your agents, are making more money. And do you know what, Maxi? You're going to make more money as well. I, I mean, there's it, a lot of hand wringing going on here. I, I Yeah, I, I think you're right. M maybe in the normal circumstances, his attitude is fine and he, he may be a perfectly fine guy, but I think that's difficult for anyone to be forced to go somewhere or coerced to go somewhere but where do, it, they didn't want to go. It. I, know, I know you're ready to say how Dimitri Payet ended up but Dimitri Payet was almost forced to come to us because Marseille needed cash he didn't want to leave Marseille so he had to come to West Ham yeah yeah he did he does yeah. I'll I get your point for every Payet there's a Gokka and Tori I get that okay but I just I just don't think Pellegrini would be going after this guy so much what does concern me a little bit is Maxi Gomez's lack of control over this I, I play I'm surprised a player I thought, you, I thought you made his first touch. I was going to say, I agree. <laughs> I've not been watching him on YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> no, but his his lack of control, there's almost like, it's, it, it, from an outsider's point of view, and I know this isn't, a, this is just going by reports, et cetera, et cetera. It's almost like he's given his agent complete control over his future to an extent. It's almost like, well, Mr. Agent, I would prefer to stay in Spain, but, you know, if, if you insist I have to go there for cash, then I'm going to have to go there, am I, Chad? And you just think, this guy's got, a choice he he can choose here Maxi Gomez he can almost make up Celta Vigo's mind for them and saying look I'm not signing for West Ham you know, you're going to have to sort something with Valencia because I go there just like he can also say there's no point in negotiating with Valencia and getting all these players because I only want to go to West Ham so you better sort something out and there's just a lack of authority coming from Maxi Gomez but I, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate myself here and that is if he really wanted to go to Valencia it would have been done by now because there's a agree Thing agreed with Valencia and Salvigo, he could have signed last night, he could have signed this morning, whatever, he could have said to West Ham, there's no point, it's done. But the fact is that it's almost like, well, that's done, but I'll listen to your offer anyway, just come on in, you can have a little, uh, a little, see if you can tempt me, see if you can tease me. And if that's there, that means he's not sold on Valencia. And well, I, I think it's sort of ego. I think we, if, if we have flown out there at all, we've only spoken to sort of ego. I think it's sort of ego that have said to Valencia, well, hold on, we're not going to do the medicals. I think sort of ego suddenly have been, I think they're almost saying to Maxi Gomez and his representatives, we, we're not going to sanction this Valencia deal. We're not going to rubber stamp it. We are, we are getting whatever, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 million pounds more with this deal. Well, You're going to have to accept it as well. By the sound of it, Celta Vigo actually wanting to do the Valencia deal because they're getting the player, aren't they? They're getting what they're, oh. I think they prefer the Valencia one because they're getting the the player they want, they're getting a player on loan. I think uh, they did up until two days ago. And then if you're to be believed, they've sent out the A team of uh, duh, 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 we've gone over there and started chucking cash. They started doing a Balotelli and chucking cash everywhere. And um, so I think maybe that's made them think, actually, this might be numerically a little bit better for us. Look, I mean, what can we say? But neither of us have a clue what's going on. Yeah, it'll be changed tomorrow. Yeah. Be, uh, the, what I will say, final words, we'll, get, we'll start wrapping up the Maxi Gomez bit because there's only a couple of strikers I want to discuss. Um, I think this is, Pellegrini keeps talking about big club mentality. I think this is big club mentality. You know what? It's ruthless. Get an arbitrage out now. Get someone over to Vigo first thing in the morning and, and let's just start bribing them, I guess. But that's exactly what the big clubs have been doing to the rest of the Premier League for years now. They've, they know, they've been coming along. We've seen it with Man United in uh, Wan Bazaka. They've got up to Crystal Palace and said, "We're having him. How much are you paying him? Why well, he's not for sale? No, we're having him. How much are, are we getting him for?" And it's almost like we're now coming up with this mentality of actually we're West Ham United. We're going to go over there, get a big wad of cash out, and say, "Right, this deal's happening." Boom. Now, it's I think it's a fifty-fifty thing. Personally, I think it's sixty-forty in Valencia's favour. I do think Valencia. Have the edge over us. I don't think Everton are really interested. I think that's the rumours. Um, but but that's my final words on Maxi Gomez. What's your final words on Maxi Gomez? And we'll move on to another couple of strikers. Uh, I'm not not an awful lot without repeating myself. But I just you know I just I can't get excited. We're not we're not on the cusp of signing Robert Lewandowski here. That's we we are we we possibly playing over the odds for somebody who who uh, anyway we'll see we'll see. I don't I, I still if I had to bet. And I would never, I would, I'm so uncertain, I wouldn't bet very much at all. But if I had a better fiver, I would still bet on him not coming. 
Hey, big spender. Hey, I got, I got, I got, I got things, mate. I just had my last tea bag. I got, I got stuff to buy. You know, yeah, it's because of that flipping shed you're building. It is, it is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, other couple of seconds, Rondon. We're not going to discuss Rondon. Me and Gonzo have spoke about Rondon. We're both big fans of Rondon. Uh, but the latest is we're going to be bidding about fourteen million pounds plus Sam Byram uh, for him. I, I'm not even sure, but has anyone actually checked West Brom actually want Sam Byram? Because we seem insistent on including him in this team. <laughs> we, we don't seem to care whether anyone wants these players or whether any of the players want to come to us. We, we're just we, we're just telling everyone what's going to happen in the world of football. Yeah, it's, it's almost like we're going to we'll, we'll give you a bit more cash, but please take Sam Byram as well. Please, someone's got to take him. Um, now the two strikers that are being linked to us as sort of if Maxi Gomez doesn't happen, um, the two strikers. The, to be fair, the the names while we their their names are. Uh, well, football, everyone's heard of them. I've not seen them linked to West Ham much in the last month or so. Uh, the first one is Belotti of Torino, um, sort of the next big thing in Italy for quite a little while. I think he sort of tailed off a little bit. Torino priced him out of a move to the bigger clubs, but because his form started to dwindle a little bit, he's now gone from the elite clubs to the next batch where I suppose you'd see West Ham United's fitting in there. Um, would, he, would he be someone that interests you a bit more than Maxi Gomez? A bit more. I don't think there's a lot in it. Again, an awful first touch. I don't know who's doing the scouting, um, but a little bit more, a little bit quicker, and um, plays with the can play with the ball in front of him a little bit more. Maybe um, he's, he, he can pass the ball. He's got perhaps got a little bit more to his game, but he also is not bad in the air. Maybe not as strong and as brutish as Maxi Gomez, who, if he is the target, obviously the reason he's the target is Pellegrini clearly feels he would be suited to the Premier League because he is big and strong. Um, so different, a bit, a bit more rounded, but I'd still have reservations about that player. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good striker. He's someone like everyone's heard of, isn't it? Everyone's heard of him. Ryan Guitar Hammer on our forum has been a big fan of Belotti for a long time. Because every transfer window, he keeps banging on about Belotti. So he's going to be getting excited to see this link as well. I think it's a suitable alternative. The, the funny, the funny thing is, I know there's probably we're looking at players that we just haven't heard of. You know, I do agree with you about that. But it almost seems like we're desperate. It, this reminds me of the summer of 2016 a little bit. We were desperate to get a name. We are desperate to get the striker to be the marquee striker. Mm. It has to be someone that ever recognises. Remember that summer of Lacazette, Batshuayi, blah, 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 and when it was Zaza. You know, we're going after names now. Maxi Gomez, Marega, Belotti. In the next guy, we'll talk about in a second. These are big names in European football, big reputations. Um, so it seems, it seems interesting, but Belotti is at the... Other one, the other one that actually interests me a little bit more. It's a bit. He's someone that's on a bumpy road of his career. His next move is crucial. It is this is the biggest move he will make, and that's uh, Andre Silva. He went from Porto to AC Milan a couple of years ago. Didn't quite hit top form. Was on loan at Sevilla last season. Um, I think he went to AC Milan for thirty-seven million, and I think he's available for just over twenty-five million this summer. Is he someone that would interest you, Portuguese uh, striker? I, I don't know him at all, Gio. I'm sorry to say I don't know this player at all. He's, he's a, he was bang in form in Porto. AC Milan picked him up, hot striker, blah, blah, blah. We went over to AC Milan. It just didn't work for him. It's just not worked out. And that's when AC Milan were chucking cash about. Remember a couple of years ago, AC Milan were literally just buying players for 30 odd million and stuff. And then they sort of thought, hang on, we've not got any cash left. What are we going to do? Um, he was their sort of marquee striker uh, to go up front. He's still been playing for Portugal regularly, despite sort of not doing that a couple ever. Went to Sevilla last season, played 50 games, and Sevilla's not got a bad attack. You know, Ben Yadder's over there as well. Uh, I think he only scored 11, so it's not he's not prolific, prolific in the last couple of seasons. But this is why I do think someone's, his next move is so crucial to his career. If he wants to sort of fulfill the potential he once had he needs to make sure that this move is bang on he becomes their main striker because he is a good striker and a good manager will be able to get a top player out of him a little bit and turn him from a 25 million pound striker into a 45 million pound striker but at the same time if he gets this wrong he'll end up being another not Balotelli where he's free but a bit like that you'll go from club to club to club without really making an impact you'll have an okay career in European football um but it'll be a waste of talent if he doesn't get this next move. He's someone I'd like. Under 30 million, it suits our price range. He's, he's nippy. He's a good finisher. He's got a lot of good traits about him. Um, I would like to see Andre Silva holding up a West Ham shirt. Are you going to go Gonzo him on YouTube later on? 
No, I uh, probably won't actually, to be fair. I, I, I do feel it's, it's interesting you say that about the money. I, if let, before Arnautovic get, got sold, let's assume we were bidding for Maxi Gomez and we'd reached our ceiling, which was 25 million. That would indicate we had 25 million in the bank to spend on a striker. Yeah. So, so Arnautovic gets sold, we got 45 million. Yeah. Why have we not upped the standard of our targets then, I wonder? Why are we not going for Haller? Why are we not going for Timo Werner? Why why have we not, if, if you're going to assume that we can just go in there and throw money at people and take them over because we can play more because we're a Premier League club. I just wonder why we haven't raised the, the standard of, of our targets. I, okay. I do... you're, you're you're assuming that Pellegrini thinks Haller is better than Maxi Gomez. I, I, I am. I am. And I, I agree more. with you. I prefer yeah. Haller myself, yeah. but yeah. that's because I don't really know Maxi Gomez. But if Pellegrini thinks he is the perfect striker for him, what is better than the perfect striker? I would be very surprised if he thought he was the perfect striker, if Pellegrini had not come to West Ham and he'd gone to Paris Saint-Germain, I, I would imagine his target would have been different. I'd imagine he wouldn't be trying to bring in Maxi Gomez. I imagine it wouldn't have been Fornals. I'd imagine possibly it wouldn't have been Felipe Anderson. I'll, I'll take your pick. Real Madrid, Man United or whatever. I think it's Maxi Gomez because he's at West Ham and he's cutting his cloth. And I just think, well, hold on a second. If your cot is, uh, cloth is cut to 25 million, he's only got 45 million to spend. Go and get a better standard striker. Uh, but you're right. I am. I am. I am assuming that Manuel Pellegrini does understand that there are better strikers in the world than Maxi Gomez, yeah. I, I think I think if we don't get Maxi Gomez, I don't think we'll sign a £40 million striker. I, do, I think he's only going gung-ho for Maxi Gomez. I think if this falls through, I think he'll then buy an Andre Silva and a Rondon. I think he'll then go get two players, a 25 and a £50 million player or something, that adds up to 40. I think he's only going gung-ho on this player because he's the one he really wants. But people become like this in football. Though it's, it's football fans, it's football managers. Mm. People become stubborn where they have to go get that one guy. And it's almost like a, it becomes a pride thing. You said as a West Ham fan, we have to remove emotion. Now I'm not saying Pellegrini and Husserlos are going with emotion, but you do get this attachment to a player that I actually you, you become like almost fixated, thinking that's the player I need. Um, and you see it that a manager will be at one club, get linked to a player, doesn't get him, goes to another club, and he gets linked to the same player again because the manager is actually like, that is my player, that's the one I want. And we, we all do it. We all do it. It's not just football. I mean, you, you know, how many times have you done it yourself? I, I've done it on eBay. Get caught up, and I think, oh, no, I want that one, I want that one, you know, and I've, I've done my research, oh, that camera's a bit there, that one, that one, that one, oh, no, no, I want that camera, and then all of a sudden, and I've, I've set the scene, oh, actually, I really like that one, because the, the, the thing was good, you know, and, and the, I just put lots of nice pictures, and then you find yourself, yeah, I mean, I, I do think that's human nature, I do, we, we, you, yeah, as I say, you, 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 you want him so much, and you just carry on bidding, and at, at no point, you know, you sort of forget to question whether whether you've exceeded the value and whether he's worth it as a player, whether he is in essence a forty million pound player, and uh, I mean, but clearly, I, I I think with Felipe Anderson, I think you look back on it now and, and you'd say, I've got to ask my own questions and answer them. By the way, is uh, is is Felipe Anderson a world class player? No, on his day. Can he look like a world class when he's doing his thing? Yes, he can. You know, on his day, is he one of the does he look like one of the best players in the Premier League? So when he's at his best, yes. Can he disappear from games? Yes. Um, you've got only got to hope that with Maxi Gomez that you have the same thing. Is he a world class striker? No. Can he, for periods of next season, if we sign him, play? like the best striker in the league or one of the or one of the top three or four strikers in the league? And you better hope the answer is yes, because otherwise you're gonna get you're not going to be happy with what you've got for your money, basically, for because that's what that's what you need for forty million. Forty million doesn't buy you world class. When West Ham, um, West Ham pay forty million, we we want a bit of sparkle. We want a bit of bit of twinkle in there. We want to to shine every now and again. Maybe okay, the curveball. Maybe Maxi Gomez is coming in by Pellegrini to make Anderson world class more often. Maybe he's the one that's going to make other players shine a little bit more. Maybe he's the one that's going to get the best out of Fernandes. He's going to get the best out of Antonio, etc. Perhaps that is why Max he's going for Maxi Gomez. Well, that's very, very interesting because uh speak to Tim Newmarket on the forum. And as you know, he watches a lot of, uh, a lot of this foreign football and, he was very much of the impression there's almost two Maxi Gomez's. There's one who, when he plays with this other player, I Aspas. can't remember. Oh? Aspas. Aspas. That's the one. 
when he plays with Aspas, his stats are, are really, really good. I mean, but when he doesn't, when Aspas doesn't play or whatever, or, or the, the formation not tweet, when he's not paired closely with this guy, maybe, he, he can't hit a donkey's ass with a banjo. Uh, he, apparently, he's, he's, he's oh. stats, his stats, I mean, I think he'd literally only scored one goal without this guy, and it was a penalty. But when he's with this guy, he's prolific or something like that. So there may be something in, in what you say. What it certainly does indicate is that you better deploy this geezer right in the correct system. Otherwise, he's going to he's gonna be ineffective. Uh, one more tra uh, transfer rumour in to, to discuss, but first I want to say thank you to uh, Nikki West Ham Fan TV, who's donated £5 for Gonzo's tea bags. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, do you know what, Nick? I'm gonna get the. Uh, I, I usually like the uh, the Yorkshire ones, but with the, I think I'm gonna get the golden, the golden Yorkshire ones. So thank you very much. Well, oh, and Dean Fenton has donated a five pounds as well for your biscuits. I mean, that's, that's oh, expensive biscuits. That's a lot of biscuit. Oh, maybe the uh, Dean. Thank you so much, sir. Maybe the um, the Fox's Viennese finger with a chocolate in the middle. Five packs of them, I think. But, <laughs> oh, they know. They <laughs> are. They are big. You've got to give two and a half of that packs to YouTube. Yeah, they're going to be really fat, aren't they? If they're yeah. taking two and a half packs of biscuits of I everyone, mean, this is like I feel like Celta Vigo. You know, there's a twenty percent, well, it's like a fifty percent sale on clause here to YouTube. It's, so, can you not? Can maybe people send us less money and send us more biscuits, <laughs> actual biscuits, and that way we get to keep all the biscuits. Yeah, I understand why they're doing this with Valencia now. When you look at it from Biscuit's point of view, yeah, well, well, we, we've got the wrong owners because, of course, um, Egger Eg Egnison or Maggot Maggot Magnuson or I don't know Richard Dickerson or whatever his bloody name was. He was a Biscuit Baron. They he owned was. they owned Biscuit things. So, yeah, uh, unfortunately, his empire was as crumbly. Yeah, as it, it, certainly, <laughs> it certainly did. It certainly did. <laughs> very, very his, his biscuit was that one you dunk in, you take out and it's gone. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, bottom, oh, bottom, geez, I, I've, I've got no problem. I'll get a spoon and I will scoop it out. I, I don't care. I'll, I'll, I'll slurp it up. Mushed biscuit, bottom of a cup. Not a problem. Anyway, anyway, back to West Ham talk. Um, one other rumour uh, coming in tonight. Um, interesting if you'll like him, because I think you liked him at Fulham. Uh, he joined Fulham last summer, uh, Sari, the centre midfielder. The rumour is he could be coming on loan to West Ham with a loan with a view to buy or perhaps an obligation. So we have to buy him next summer um, for whatever fee it might be. Exactly what we need. Exactly what we need. Box to box, lots of legs. Well, just two legs, actually. No more legs than any other player, but but good. They they move more. They move oh. they move him around more than any other player. He's very very good. I really like him. I know it didn't work out, but you know what? You can lay the blame at lots of players not working out. Maybe it was the recruitment policy. Um, what was his name? Yov Yov. What was the geezer's name? The the, the, the manager that got sacked. Yov. What's his name? Jovetic. What was his name? Oh, I can't think of it. Yeah, whatever, whatever his name was, the Fulham manager who got him promoted. Apparently, he wasn't buying the players. They brought all these guys in, and Khan, the owner, was buying. Was it the Jock Vanovic or something? Jock Jock Vanovic. It sounds Scottish. That's um, that is, that is that's what happens when a, when a Scotsman makes with a Serb. Jock Jock Vanovic. Right. Um, well, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the opposite one, and I'm not um, doing this on purpose. I watch. I watch a lot of Premier League football. Go on, so I'll tell you, I watch a lot of Premier League football. Maybe six games a weekend. Um, oh. Sometimes even eight. I don't know. I watch a lot. I watch a lot of Fulham. This guy has to take a lot of the blame for their allegation. The amount of games I watch where he's strolled about the middle of the pitch, not getting involved whatsoever. The game is passing him by. Centre midfielders were running past him. He was like Czech Kiat. He was at West Ham United at some points. He was just standing there watching and I thought you absolute bottler he did naff all him and Andre Shirla took their egos onto the football pitch and decided actually we're better than this I'm not going to bother now of course if he comes to West Ham it's a new star etc a loan deal is good I'm, I'm all for a loan deal but I would not want to see us spend big money on this guy because that guy's attitude was stinking at Fulham and I do not like players like that we're just getting rid of a guy with a stinking attitude I do not want this guy in there so when it was time to fight, roll up your sleeves and fight for staying in Premier League. This guy decided, actually, I'm going to roll mine down because I'm a foreigner and I don't like the Premier League. It's cold over here. I'm getting my gloves on. I'm going to stand in the middle of the park and do next to nothing. Um, I was not impressed by this guy at all whatsoever. And a lot of Fulham fans were raging because Ranieri um, kept putting him in, leaving out Tom Kearney, who was sort of like 
die for the biology. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah. I don't feel like leaving out Mark Noble and playing Chet and then thinking, well, wh wh where is it going wrong? Um, so, loan, yes, buy, mm -mm -mm -mm. not for me. I'll you, well. you want me to? <laughs> you want me to <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. I was still thinking of biscuits, but um, no. Uh, you know, you watch far more Premier League football than me. I I think he's a good player. When, when I've seen him, he looks like a good player. Uh, have I sat there? Have I? Can I honestly say I've sat there? Apart from when West Ham played him, and say I've watched the 90 minutes of Fulham games. I said, no, I'm probably picking up on highlights and things like that, but I like what I've seen. He's, he's, he's boxed a talent. Box. Yeah, he has. He has got lots when, of talent. When he turned up, when he when he could be arsed. He looked good, but the problem mm. was he wasn't arsed enough for me. Um, you know, we talk about Anderson being inconsistent. He's inconsistent due to hiding a little bit. This guy was inconsistent because he couldn't be arsed at all. <laughs> and and that's, well, there's a complete difference in attitude between him and Anderson when they're not on it. Um, anyway, let's move to the questions. Uh, live chat, don't put them in yet. Uh, actually, put them in. I've got my pay slip envelope. I'll just write on the back of that. Um, if you do have questions, I'll write on the back of my pace. I, I took my notebook. I took my notebook with me to Stratford when we were filming. I left it in Stratford, didn't I? So I've not been to uh, the shop to buy a new... Uh, to be fair, I might use Dean Fenton's one pound and go get a new... Uh, well, hold on, hold on. That has been allocated to the biscuit fund. It's you got to go just go and spend in that on admin stuff. Stationery. That's it. That's what I was looking for. Stationery. Yeah, it's got to come out of pet cash, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway... Write them down, we'll get on to them. We're going to jump to the Twitter ones and we'll fly through them first. Gary Smithers says, despite conceding 55 goals and the most shots, are you surprised that we are, are concerned that we are not addressing defensive issues this transfer window? No, I should be, I think, when you say it like that. Maybe I should be. I don't know. I, I just think we'll be... I haven't got any grand expectations for this coming season. I just want to see... More good football, better good football, more attacking, more goals, more technique. Um, yeah, I, I also think we've got good defenders. I, I do think, I think maybe there's something to do at full back, at left back, possibly. I really like Belbuena and uh, Diop together, and I think uh, hopefully we've seen off Man U with that. So as a pairing, I think they're pretty good. They're only going to get better. Um, I think at right back, even though Zabaleta is getting older. I think we'll have a better season next season because Fredericks could only get better because he was injured so much of the time. And I do think Ben Johnson is going to make an impression. So I, I think we've got stuff to come there. Maybe left back, not too bothered. I think we'd have had to spend a lot of money to get a centre-back who was better than either Balbuena or Diop. And I mean a lot of money, which probably would have meant we wouldn't have got four nulls. We probably would have had to spend 20 odd million on a centre-back to get one better than those two. So I'm, I don't mind. I don't mind. I think... Us sorting out midfield actually will um will will protect that and, and Declan will be better this season as well at Shield in the back four. So I'm I'm sure we'll concede less goals. Yeah, um one sec, just writing down there. Well it's all right, while you're writing it down, I also think with the more possession we have, the less I think that's very much Pellegrini's philosophy. The more we have of the ball, the less opportunities the opposition has to attack. So attack is the best form of defence. So I think Pellegrini's probably thinking that as well. Um, I, I think I, I think we're going to have plenty of the ball. I think changing information is going to work wonders for us next season. We're going to have more possession. Therefore, opposition has less possession. Chances are going to have less shots. Um, I think we're tweaking it a little bit. Too often last season, we got beat or conceded a lot of shots because we played two in the centre of midfield. Um, and I think Pellegrini won't make that mistake. Also, we had a lot of disruption last season. Down, I'm not saying the team down tools, but they did a little bit. You know, Cardiff away, Burnley away. Might as well just not bother turning up. And I wouldn't be surprised if we conceded about 10 shots on target in those games. And that sort of bumps the stats up dramatically a little bit. And, you know, sometimes when we were playing Arsenal, we played Arsenal, we were 1-0 up. Uh, or was, yeah, it was Arsenal we were 1-0 up at. You sort of concede a lot of shots in games like that just because you're defending so I don't mind that. I think sometimes it can be misleading, but at the same time, when you are you you do concede a lot more shots in Huddersfield. It is also a little bit worrying. But I think Pellegrini is sorting it, and I don't think it's necessarily personnel. I think it's the way we set up. Uh, but what does concern me is our fullbacks, and he's not addressing them. So we'll see, we'll still concede a lot of crosses. Um, JPWHU TV says, would you take Callum Wilson to play alongside Hernandez as it stands now? Hello, hello, John. Um, no, 
no, no, I, I, no, no. I think they're too similar. I wouldn't play those two together in the same team. Certainly not. No. Um, no, not for not for me either at all. It's far too expensive. Um, David White O two says, "Who would you like to see in the number seven shirt when the money grabber leaves?" And he left some kind words about the channel. So thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Uh, who would like to see the number seven shirt when the money grabber leaves? Who can... see number seven's a funny old shirt. It's it's iconic for some clubs, isn't it? And um, but it's not positionally it drifts around it's like you say number 10 in world football people know what a number 10 is what's the number nine people sort of know um who would get the number seven hmm interesting what about the fornicator well he's 15 now well you can change it but you can't no. give him a number because kids have gone and got his name and number on the back of a shirt away. You can't change it now. I'm sorry, but you can't. Oh, you can, I suppose. Felipe Anderson did it, remember? Oh, uh, okay. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll give it to um, I'll give it to Yosef Paulson when he comes in. Oh, very good. I um, I would keep it for the striker, perhaps. But we've got number nine free as well. Carol's left. Number nine's free. So I would just keep it free. Actually, you don't have to give someone the number seven shirt. I would just leave it until we buy a player or a player sort of justifies a little reward. Um, Yarmolenko's got a team number, so there's no real point in that. Antonio maybe as a, a, a reward, or you just keep it. And perhaps a youngster breaks through the next couple of years or we sign someone, I don't know. This, it doesn't really bother me, these numbers. I mean, like you said, it's it's at some clubs, it's a big thing, like at Man United, to have Beckham, etc. But... People are pissed all over it since then, like Memphis Depay and Michael Lloyd and stuff. I mean, it's gone yeah. down value a little bit, hasn't it? Yeah, um, but don't, haven't haven't the um, that's the Newcastle one, isn't it? Because that was it's their number nine. I think Malcolm McDonald's or whatever was there. Was it Jack? Maybe even Jackie Milburn. Something. I think mean, started Jackie Milburn. So that is great, iconic uh, number nine, and then. It became so big, nobody could ever fill the shirt. And I had, I had a load of stinkers for years and years and years, probably until they, they signed Shearer. Um, and nobody could fill that. They used to call it a massive shirt. The number nine shirt of Newcastle hangs heavy on any signings that come in. Maybe it's good that we retired uh, Bobby Moore's shirt in that sense. Um, as I, said, I think it certainly you know, would have been a hindrance to any young player. Uh, you imagine Declan, I know Declan central midfield last season, but when he was coming through as a centre back and he started playing under Moyes, you'd imagine the clamour. I'll oh, give him the number six. It would have been all that, wouldn't it? And maybe it's a little. Some people have said that actually. People, some people have said unretire the number six and give it to Declan Rice. Listen, maybe, maybe if if Declan plays, has ended up playing two hundred and fifty, three hundred games for us, and. You know, and, and he's on his way to becoming a little West Ham legend, then maybe it might be a conversation, you know, and he's at that point got 50 England caps. Well, you know, I, yeah, I mean, you can have the conversation, but you don't just, you know, I, I like him. I rate him highly. I think he's absolutely brilliant. I'd be devastated when he leaves, but, you know, he's come on, he's played a couple of seasons for us. You don't um, um, undo that. Dylan, um, at Arcano, I know some of I hate people with these funny Twitter handles. I don't even know how to pronounce them. I don't no. want to spell them. Anyway, Dylan says, Gio, you've done a fair bit of watching and betting on the Australian A League last year. Is there anyone that impressed you? Yes, but not for West Ham standard. It's <laughs> Sunday League standard. Do you remember uh, Richie Delate that used to, he was at Man United and we went to Leicester and he was at Norwich, the right back? Uh, the, I, the name sounds familiar. I can't say. He, he was like average to poor in the Premier League. Okay. He wasn't. Funny enough, he's got a Premier League uh, winner's medal, though, because of that season last year, won it? Um, but there was a period during last season in Australian A-League, he was playing up front. <laughs> I'm not joking. He was generally Melbourne City's top goal scorer for a little period, and he was getting stuck up front because they had no striker. There was one player that impressed me last season. I mean, the, for people that's watching on Australian football, it's good to watch. It's got a lot of goals, a lot of cars, a lot of cars. It's good to bet on. But players over that... To, to emphasise who does well in that league, Adam Lafondre, the Reading striker, he always used to score against West Ham. He was sort of the, the, the top striker in the league, and that's the poor standard. But there was a player called Harrison on loan from Spurs. He went to Melbourne for a few games, and um, he looked good. Uh, I don't know how old he is. I think he's only 19 or something. Harrison, uh, ha I'm sh sh I think he's called Shalem. Shane, Shalem, Shane Harrison. He Good player. I uh, don't know if he'll break through at Spurs, but if he does, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Nick at Cuckoo Blofeld says, how many hoogles is Gonzo spending on his man cave? Oh, I don't know. 0 0.01? I don't know. I wouldn't know how to do the exchange rate. 
It's expensive. It's, it's, uh, look, I, I, I'll tell you now. Is, I, is I, it nine million pounds? No, but no, no. Right. So how do you? I, so I don't know how you do the percentage. I'm mean, building it myself, so they get quoted six grand. So oh, fuck, you know, no, no chance. So I'm, I probably will end up check chucking fifteen hundred quid at it, and, and I'm not sure that will be enough. But it's tight. It's tight. Yeah, it's tight. It's, it's very expensive. And seven hundred oh, quid need, in timber. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. We need, we need another one thousand four hundred and ninety pounds in live chat to pay for your man shed. <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> you're fine. No, it's, I've, I've, I've managed it. I've, I'll, I'll manage it. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It may be quite sparsely decorated for a little while, though. But obviously, as as people, because people keep asking me, I'm, I'm surprised how much interest has been. But this will be all be going, and that will be my new. Um, premises for doing video which should make it easy right, won't, won't, won't make it any better for you lot watching but it will make my life easier and my life. That, huh? that that toilet thing you're in is like your legacy of hammer's channel yeah yeah but i mean even now it's hot because it's a hot day it's hot in here i've had to shut the door because everyone's just come back in and dogs are barking all the rest of it it will make it far easier for me to just take the stuff i'll have the internet down there i'll switch on the lights just take the laptop down there plug it in and then off i go so it'll um, be a nice be a nice space for me looking forward to that actually Happy days. Right. Uh, YouTube questions that were left on a post I did earlier for subscribers. Uh, Scott Bloomfield, Reese Oxford, Silva, Holland and Cullen. If you as the manager, would they feature next season? And if so, how does that affect our transfer business? So, that, that, that Silva. So was it Silva, Oxford, Cullen? Who was the other one? Holland. Uh, no, I, I don't think Oxford can come back. I, well, I, I, tell you, I, I, tell you, I would be, I know, I know, I would be very impressed with Pellegrini if after everything that's happened and after him saying it's best if he goes, I think that would show really superb man management skills from Pellegrini if he can bring Reese Oxford back round. He's particularly. in Switzerland. He's in Switzerland. I know, I know. But I mean, mentally, if he can mentally bring him back round and bring him back round as a player, wow, that would be superb, particularly given the attitude of, um, of uh, that I i allegedly that uh his agent has uh which is which is always different uh cullen no silva needs to play more he's been he needs to play we need to i, I want to see some goals from him in the under 23s which I, I would i would expect him to do because they've dropped down they got relegated the under 23s so they are a lesser level now um holland yeah i, th I think this is this is his season to either break through or or go on loan. I think you'll see him. I would. I will say we will see Nathan Holland feature on the bench at least ten times this season, and that is, and that is progress for him. That that really that really is. I, I still maintain that had he have been fit when you know the Armalenko thing happened and all the rest of it, and Dean Garner got his chance, it actually wouldn't have been Dean Garner got put in. I think Nathan would have got put in there. So um, yeah, that, that's that's my take on on those. I can I can only I don't think we'll see Silver next year apart from League Cup games. Um, Colin, I think if someone comes in for him in the summer, a million pounds or something, I think he'll be gone. To be honest with you, I think he's got about two games to show Pellegrini, and, and I mean pre-season games. He's got two friendlies to show Pellegrini. He's got Switzerland slash Austria, China, and then that's it. And I think if we don't see him against. Uh, Fulham or Bilbao, I think that's his card marked up and he's on his way out the door. Echo your thoughts for Holland. Reese Oxford, I've always defended Reese Oxford on here. I've always said it's a shame because I think, you know, how can you, how can a guy with so much potential just be crap all of a sudden? And I know his attitude comes into it, but I do think there's been a bit of almost bullying at West Ham on, towards Reese Oxford because the board made a mistake giving him such a big contract. And he's become a victim of that. He's become a victim and he's become the West Ham fans' pin-up boy for why you shouldn't give youngsters new contracts. Because when Declan Rice was going through it, everyone that was against giving Declan Rice a decent wage all pointed at Reese Oxford and said, that's why you shouldn't. And it's, it's just, you should never compare the two things. It's, there's no correlation between Declan Rice and Reese Oxford's contracts. You know, one player shouldn't be punished because of a mistake. Now, it was a mistake to give him it. But he's now of the age and a squad player that actually his wage is now acceptable. It wasn't acceptable when he was 17 years old, but now he's 20. He can maybe be on the bench and say, so 20 grand a week is, is, is a, a fair wage for him. So I think, I hope he gets a second chance under Pellegrini. Well, it's probably about a fourth chance at West Ham. And I hope he takes it because he can play defensive midfield. He can play centre-back. He was playing right back over in Germany, etc. So the guy is versatile. He's English. He's young. Christ, if we can unlock a player in there, then it saves ourselves, you know, 10, 20 million pounds in transfer market. 
And it means that we can book Carlos Sanchez in the 23 as well. Glad to see him. Um, Tom Eek says, do you like how our chat will look? I think no strikers is revolutionary. Yeah, I like it. I, I think he might come up with something a bit saucy, to be honest. I, I don't, I'm not, I don't think for a moment we're going into the season with no strikers. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not panicking about it. I do see many people getting angry. I uh, can't, I can't worry. I can't worry about it myself. I've got, no, I've got faith that we just won't, that just won't happen. So, you know, we've got finals done early. Um, there's still lots of time. I, I don't think we're going to take it right to the wire. I think we're trying. And I think there'll be a striker announced. If it's not a striker announced in the next two weeks, we'll be very, very surprised. So I'm not worried at all. Yeah, I agree. Um, flight time. Have either of you seen a ghost or had a paranormal experience, but not under the influence of alcohol? Uh, I, I I have had an experience. Oh, rubbish. I have, I, have had, I have had an experience, actually, but I'm certainly not going to discuss it on here for, well, for reasons just like that, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, I, I have many, many moons ago. Many, many years ago. Yeah. Give us one example. What, did you see a ghost? No, I didn't. I didn't see a ghost. I didn't see it. I'm not talking about it, but I did. I did have a, uh, yeah, he asked, he asked a question. I was expecting that question to come up, to be fair. So. Well, his question next week is going to be, what experience but I, i'm not i'm not going to say i'm not going to say it. it's not because it's going to sound it's personal and it's going to sound ridiculous but uh Why are you smiling? But, but, well uh, it's just a funny question did, to you come shag up a ghost? did i what shag a ghost i'll tell you what i would i've got no i've got no qualms about that but um no see i'm not a mystical person i'm not a uh I'm more, far more scientific. I'm not a religious person at all. So, uh, so yeah, for me to to have a have an experience, I thought even you know, I thought it was quite quite strange. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm not a believer. I'm a cynic. I, I'm a cynic. I don't even believe that hypnotism works. I don't even believe that massage works. I'm the biggest cynic. You don't believe in massages? I, don't know, I think it's a load of rubbish. I mean, that I don't think it does anything about it at all. I don't. I don't. Chiropractic. All that stuff. All that stuff. Um, what's the one where they rub the feet? Homey, is it home? Not homeopathy, reflexology. One, there's one of it. Yeah, but it's not massage, though, is it? That's... Hold on, what? Acupuncture. Why are you? Why are you listening? Um, cup of tea. She, why is she not tuning in? We get an extra view. She's just listening through the door. Um, yeah, of course, that's so Acu listen, uh, acupuncture. Yeah, that load of old rubbish. Um, it's all rubbish. Everything's rubbish. So for me to have a mystical experience was quite weird. So, um, I, 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 a massage can't be made up though it literally happens you literally no, no 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 i just don't believe it does any good you know so like someone would come up and go oh you're ten ah shut up no i'm not tense i'm fine yeah, you know what i mean the, oh, oh 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 i can feel that no you can't yeah but the person telling you that is not trained in like all that sort of stuff i mean that's like a someone like about me coming around to you going oh you need your slates done i don't know about <laughs> like, so um you can't you have to believe in massages it's a physical thing <laughs> no no no, no, no not all those oils on all those oils listen I, I believe it might be quite pleasant if you like that sort of thing that someone you know rubbing some more but all these different oils they do different things now don't you might you could use lard and it would do the same thing uh you know it's not um yeah i don't like load of old rubbish. Oh, this stuff's rubbish. It's all in the mind. It's all everything's in the mind. The plus I, I people to an extent, but I don't believe in. I don't believe in stuff like ghosts. I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe. I don't believe in much things, to be honest with you. But I do believe in getting Maxi Gomez of that Sam Pelgrini <laughs> Um Say names. Um, Vincent Ritchie. Should we be looking at Bowen from Hall? Who? Yeah, well, he's a, he's a top talent. Uh, James oh, so Bowen. I'm right. Hmm. No. He sort of plays. He can play up front, or he can play out wide in like a front three. Scores a lot of goals for Hull. 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 Yeah. But if you're scoring, I think he scored about twenty-two last season or something. I had him a lot. I I do like an anytime goal scorer treble every week, and he was in my treble quite a lot. And he'd score a lot. Basically, if he was playing at home, I'd put him in my treble. Um, he scored over twenty goals, I think, for Hull, who were not that great. I mean, he's. Very good. Che Adams has just gone to Southampton. Yeah. I, think this, I think this guy's better than Che Adams. I, I, I think, I, I just don't think we're scouting in that. I think we're really heavily looking at the um, at the uh, at the Spanish market and at the Portuguese market. Oh, I, do we, you think we'll get him? Do you want him? Uh, no, I, well, no, I've never seen him play. Never, I've, I would more likely to have had a massage than seen him play. Um, James Gunn, if you lost your son in a crowd of people, 
which member of our current squad would you trust to pick him out? Oh. Oh, that's good. Is it, does he mean find him? I think so. Yeah. I think what he's saying is he's got he's there's a big crowd and and he's lost. He's lost. I'm, I'll be panicking. I'll be panicking. I lost I lost my two dogs the other day. Terrible. Crikey. Anyway, um found them, obviously. And oh so, so you need to you need, need to be tall, I think. Tall with good vision. Um uh, bitch. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, my yeah, yeah. Excuse me, Marco. Excuse me, Marco. Can you come back? Yeah, you probably have sold him into child slavery in China. Or was, actually, I shouldn't say that. We retract that. Are we, are we live? Um, yeah, system. Um, oh, racist! I'm about to say Chinese. I'm just about an out of it. Just some going to China. Um, oh, oh, buena for me. Bad yeah, way. tall with good. a bit of vision. Oh. I was going to say Lanzini, but he's too short. He won't be able to see over the crowds. He'd get injured. He'd want Crouchy, really. I know he's not ours, but you know, he'd want to get Crouchy to, to spot him. He's tall. Maybe if Carlton Cole was in the um was doing the uh was doing the legendary stuff in the corporate or stuff like that. Maybe say Carlton, lost me boy. Interested. Um James Thorne, Geo, are you up to date with Designated Survivor? Yes, I've watched the whole current. Did you give up with that? You gave up with Designated Survivor. Second, 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 second season went. Huh? I watched the third season. Yeah, I think there's 10 episodes I watched in a week. I watched about the three episodes the first night it went up, but I was just one after the other. I was, yeah, I enjoyed it. I take it James is a big fan of Designated Survivor. Good I've story. started Sons of Anarchy. Oh, just, uh, just started. Just started. It's really good. Stick with it. Oh, really she's good. ruthless. The wife is ruthless, I tell you. I'm only, I'm only, I'm six episodes in. They're not, they're not nice people. They are not nice people, the Sons of Anarchy. They've not got ruthless yet. Oh really? They, they've just oh, they oh, I, actually, I can't spoil it. Other people haven't watched it, but they they found someone with a tattoo on his back and they weren't pleased about it. Put it that way. What do you mean? Um if someone hasn't watched it yet, it's about ten years old. You're the only one that's not watched it yet. <laughs> You're gonna come on here in X and say I'm watching uh Vic and Bad, pretty good. Very very good. They're doing another series apparently. Oh, no, they shouldn't. Leave it alone. It finished. He's dead. It, he died at the end. Uh, yeah, he did die. Maybe, maybe it's the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if anyone's going to see that, it'd be me. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, that's it from the, the people there. Now it's the live chat questions. We've got another 10 minutes or so, so we'll get a few, quite a few of them. Um, if I don't read them out from my, my pay slip envelope, if I don't read it out there, put it back in because I, I gave up writing because my envelope's full, basically. Um, oh, yeah, but it went full with your wages, was it? No, it's gone already. You took uh, my money for the, your shed. <laughs> Told me it's the Hammers chat shed, so I've got to contribute to it. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. Go on. Um, Clayton, uh, I know it sounds like a German sausage, but what do you think of the rumoured interest in Dutch striker Wout Weghorst? Uh, uh, who? Weghorst. Scored Klaus. 16 goals last season, I think. Clayton could have put the stats up. Uh, Clayton could... knows these players. Klaus Grudel Schnitzel, never heard of him. Good never finish. heard of him. Good finisher, good player, quite a big boy as well. Um, he brings players into play quite a bit, um, which is why I was asking about Maxi Gomez's sort of attributes away from goal scoring. I, I would be happy with him. I do think Bundesliga is where we need to be looking actually i think i'm a bit biased because i don't watch the liga much i don't watch liga uh, i don't watch set up uh, but i do watch the bundesliga um good players over there so yes clayton yes for me gonzo might youtube him and um, steve says could hugo be this season snodgrass no i feel sorry for him like even west brom don't want him like but to be fair, why would Billich want to be even West Brom? <laughs> I mean, they're like, what, uh, sixth place championship side. And they're thinking, nah, we don't want him. You're all right. So where is he going to go? He's going to have to go to like a lower league championship. At the minute, right, he's in training. Can you imagine? This is Hugo's thing. He's in training in Switzerland right now. He's having fun. Lanzini, he's in training. He's got Lanzini and Anderson pinging balls into him. He's banging them in. He's having a bit of fun with the lads. He's going golfing with Alan Creswell. Creswell likes a bit of golf. He's playing golf with Alan Creswell. Then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, do you want to go play for a, a relegation battle inside in the championship? He's probably thinking, you know what? I'm all right here with my 30 grand a week at West Ham. Thank you very much. I'm pretty chilled here. He's in, you know, someone, I remember last season there was a thing 
he, he, he never got on under Moyes, did he? And he was coming out the ground. And someone said to him, oh, do you regret joining West Ham? He says, no, I've learned more at West Ham in three months than I have in my whole career, just because of the standard of coaching and stuff. So as you got, it's... I'll tell you what, I feel sorry for him, uh, actually. I do, because he seems like a nice guy. He can help me with my shirt if he's at a loose end. But it's the fact that Preston North End, his club, have just sold their striker and they've not come in for him, even on loan. That, that, I think that would, would be would be disappointing if I was him. Where has he gone? What? The striker. I don't bloody know. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you that. You know, you know, you know me. I know things in the I, world of football. I, I've missed this. Is it? Is it Robinson? Callum Robinson? Uh, they, I think they've sold someone for five or six million quid. I don't. You know. Uh, yeah, so, Callum Sal- 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 Who's the other striker? It won't be Jaden Stockley because he only joined in January from Exeter. I, I, I don't know. Is the one that was scoring goals, but he had a big injury last season, or a decent one. Uh, but he came back at the end of it and started scoring again. So he's a decent, is, he, is he a Premier League club? No, I, I don't know. He came on the radio the other day. I'm uh, Googling this later. Okay. Callum Robinson. I need to check. This is my goal scoring thing for next season. Um, Thomas says, is Ings worth 20 million? Danny Ings is signed for Southampton, 20 million quid. Um, do you think it's worth that? No, but is anyone worth anything these days? It's, like, it's crazy money. It's crazy money. Injury prone striker who scored seven goals last season. It's a it's a hell of a they must be laughing. Liverpool. I, I bet they can't believe what's going on. Not with just that, with they, they do seem to sell quite well, Liverpool. Um might be interesting to see what big signing they they got money in the bank, isn't they? Yeah. Interesting. Um I don't think he is actually. People are gonna be shocked, but I don't think he is. Last season was do you know what I spoke about Andre Silva's next move is massive. I think a year ago, literally 12 months ago, Danny Ings' next move was massive. And he, he's gone to the right club. I do think he's gone to the right club when he's 30 players kind of thing. But he's just, he's now picking up small niggles as well. He's had two big ones, but he's now getting a lot of niggly little injuries and stuff. And it's such a shame. But Southampton fans do really like him. They think he's a really good player. It's just that he's just never fit. But I think it's the right fit for him. Um, I hope he stays fixed. I do think he's a top player. Um, well, I say top player. I don't mean world class or anything stupid like that. I do think he's a solid Premier League goal scorer. That will get his goals. Works hard. I think he's underrated. I think he's underappreciated. Um, Mark Weir says, "Are you worried that we're not going to have a striker for the Man City game?" Now I'm not going to ask Gonzo this because um, the transfer window shuts before the Man City game, so it shuts. Man City Saturday, it shuts on Thursday night. Thursday night at 5 pm, boom, window shuts. So it's the 9th of August, I think, 8th of August, round about then. Um, nah, we'll, how many do you think we'll sign? Two? A big one and a little one, not height wise, but price wise. Yeah, I, I do. I do think we'll sign for two strikers, yeah. Yeah, t- two for me as well. Um, Hammer Well says, Are you happy that Winston Reed's back and where will he play? Or sh- will he play? Uh, yeah, well, happy for Winston Reed. He will play. If there's an injury, if Diop and Bobwena don't get injured, then I, he won't play. Um, you alluded to something earlier on about Silva. You said you, you only think Silva will play in the League Cup. I don't want to see any of that this season at all. At, at all. I don't want any weakening of the team for the Cups at all. So, um, but, I, but I'm pleased for Winston Reid that he's back. Must be horrible being injured for all that time. And, and he's a good defender on his day, but he's... Something's going to have to happen for him to dislodge the two people that hold the shirts at the moment. Who's your third choice centre back right now? Would have to be Ogbonna again. Something would have to happen for Winston Reid to then take Ogbonna's place. That's, that is the cruel reality of long term injury, I'm afraid. Do you think Reid will get a testimonial eventually at the end of his contract? Um, I don't. I I don't like. Testimonials, I mean the modern day testimonials. I, well, I just, I, I do because it's very rare a player now qualifies for ten. I don't like these bollocks matches that some clubs put on for when a player leaves after five years of service. I think what's that? That's not a thing. You know, you're just making this up. It's like they call it a charity game, but it's really like almost like a testimonial. I, I only like it when it's a ten year service. And if I think Winston Reid accomplishes ten years of service, I think he should get one because then. Our first friendly, uh, our friendly, our first testimony at the London Stadium was then Winston Reid. He scored the last goal at Upton Park. He's, he's going to go down as a legend of West Ham United. I know people can say, oh, he's not like Bobby Moore and stuff. I'm not saying he's as good as Bobby Moore, etc. What I'm saying is he's contributed 10 years of service to West Ham, scored important goals. 
it was his birthday the other day and i remember putting up on twitter that like um that performance away to manchester city was one of the best performances i've ever seen from an individual west ham united player winston reeds that 2-1 victory he was m magnificent and i do think on his day he was better than anyone outside the top six um we'll take a couple more questions and then we'll start wrapping um this one up is there any in the live chat uh, which club will lanzini want if he leaves us that's from forever blowing bubbles i'm sure he would like to go to any spanish club or um or liverpool in england i think is the uh is the one but it's gonna be um yeah i, I don't i don't think so i don't think so sorry my, my daughter's just given me a balloon A unicorn. I, I will make you a unicorn, darling, but you have to take that and you should be in bed. Daddy's in the middle of summer. Excuse me. That, that, that happens rarely. You you promised Jazza you would uh, answer a question. The question is, excluding Weiss and Fabianski, a long-term injury to which player would cost West Ham the most points? Say again. Sorry, say that all again? Ex excluding Weiss and Fabianski. So your answer is not allowed to be Declan Weiss and Fabianski, okay? Yeah. A long-term injury to which West Ham United player would cost us the most points? Oh, okay. That's a hard one. It is a hard one. It is a hard one. Um, and well, at the moment, actually, we don't have a striker. So whoever well, I, the I was about to say, would it be the striker we ain't got? Yeah, one, yeah it would be the striker we haven't got, possibly. Um, I certainly wouldn't be an attacking midfielder because you could pick any one of three or four now who could play in there um it I've may got, it, I, okay yeah it, it might be it might be sort of diop or felipe anderson or something you know maybe something like that see i think val buena because we literally lost games without him last season or martin noble because history stats show that when noble don't play we don't win um but just this is a challenge for pellegrini he needs to replace what martin noble brings with the armband on his arm, basically. Not just his boot. I think uh, I'm a big fan of Noble, etc., etc. But basically, Mark Noble plays 34 games in the Premier League next season. Pellegrini's messed something up a little bit. It's a bit like the Robert Snodgrass thing. If Snodgrass plays a lot of games next season, something's gone wrong because why are you smiling? Hey? What are you thinking? I'm, what are you laughing at? You're... Don't worry. Don't you carry on with your questions, man. You, you're saying. If, if Snodgrass is starting next season, something's gone wrong. Carry on. Yeah, because they, on paper, they're not our best players, are they? And we've spent twenty five million on Fernals to probably replace Noble, or it means that Jack Wilshere is injured again, etc. I mean, something's gone wrong if those two are like playing a lot of games, in my opinion. I, I agree, and I think Noble we should see going ahead. Noble playing each season, perhaps five or t ten games less than he did in the previous season. That's just naturally going to happen with age, because aside from a good self, most people get worse with age. Anyway, um, last question, and we'll start wrapping this one up. Um, it's a good question, actually, because our first friendly is on Thursday. Uh, we're playing Austria on Thursday. Uh, we'll, we'll do a video neither at a time about the game and after the game, etc. Um, we'll probably find it. I'm sure we'll find it. Um, Forever blowing bubbles. What do you want to see from our pre-season friendlies? Oh, I want to see... I, think, I always like to see new players in the pre-season friendlies and young players. So I want to see some wonderful goals from Fornals. I want to see uh, Nathan Holland. I like to see Silva. And um, I, I think particularly this time as well, I don't need I don't need to see Anderson particularly, although they'll have to start building up as it gets towards the end. They'll have to start building up some fitness and some team play. And at the end of your series of friendlies, then you want to start getting towards what your first team is going to be for your first game of the season. However, at the start, I want to see players that haven't really featured. So I want to see lots of Lanzini. I want to see Wilshire feature. I think that would be great. A really good pre-season from Wilshire where he's scored some goals and done some audacious skills and scored a free kick. I mean, that would be really, really lovely to see. Um, a bit of Ben Johnson as well. Yeah, four nulls. Looking forward to There's going to be so many attacking midfielders on the pitch. I won't, yeah, I'm not looking forward to anyone else really. So, yeah, I, I think it's a good fun. I always find pre-season a good fun time. I enjoy it. Youngsters for me. Youngsters, Reese Oxford. Josh Cullen, these ones that are at make or break stage at West Ham United. Nathan Holland's got another two seasons after this one to impress if he needs to. Uh, Cullen Oxford don't. Uh, this is their last chance uh, um, 
scenario of formation. I want to see what Pellegrini's planning next season. I think it's 4-3-3, but I think we'll find out pretty quick because he's got the he's got the perfect three already there. Rice isn't there yet, so you have to assume he won't be. So I think on Thursday, I think we might see a midfield three of Sanchez, Lanzini and Noble or Wiltshire. So I think Sanchez will be the sitting midfielder or maybe he'll play Oxford there. I don't know, but I think we'll see 4-3-3 three, three is our formation next season. I think we'll, I think every game, I think we'll play 4-3-3 three, three at some point, whether it's the first half or we'll start the second half playing it. I think we'll play it every um, one. But there's a... Um, some people are getting grumpy because I said more, no more questions. Um, very last, we'll just have to answer them very quickly. Um, what do you think of Tottenham downgrading the West Ham game to Category B? Brilliant. That's really funny. Really, really fast. Too shy. Too, too shy. You know, listen, they want to play. I give, I give Tottenham a lot of stick. They're giving us a bit of stick there. But it builds up. I think it stokes the fires of the rivalry. I like it. I like it. I, I love, love playing Tottenham. I love beating Tottenham. I love when they do petty stuff like that. I think it's brilliant. I, I think I think it shows we've got under their skin a little bit. They're they're a little bit aggrieved. I think but it will just it's a cheap shot. It's a cheap shot by Tottenham, but I like it. I think it's a one 0 West Ham United off the pitch already before the season's even started. Anyway, God, is there anything you would like to quickly add before we disappear for the evening? No, I don't think so. We've got lots. We, we keep reacting to stuff as it happens. Um, yeah, we we got we got lots more. We listen. This transfer window ain't finished yet. The news ain't finished yet. We may well find that we wake up tomorrow morning and something fresh is happening. We'll keep talking about it. We'll keep getting things wrong as well because everybody else is. But, you know, we'll be trying. Just keep, keep you know, keep dealing with it all, mate. Getting everyone's comments, answering them, speaking to everyone, speaking to ourselves, building sheds, eating biscuits, buying tea. We do it all at Hammers Chat. Thank you, uh, Nikki. And was it Dean as well um, for, the, uh, for the tea and biscuits? Uh, we'll keep pumping out content and speaking of pumping and uh, there's a mass debate video on the channel that we, we put up yesterday we're talking about should the board be forgiven there's one more to come uh which is can west ham break into the top six now before someone jumps on us it's because talk sport that when we recorded talk sport that day or before we're talking about could west ham finish in the top four so we took it down to top six and there was a, a decent discussion as well uh that'll be going up at some point um next week that's been gone i've been joe we've been hammer's chat drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're on the itunes feed and subscribe to the channel if, if you're new around here we'll see you very soon and the way these transfer rumors are going we'll probably see you tomorrow night